Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 34, and today we are returning with two more games, plus transfer deadline day as well. And presuming we win our first game, we'll also take a look at our Europa League group as well. Because of course, in the last episode, you guys would have seen it. Uh, we beat Nor Coping, uh, or Nor, Nor, Nor Coping uh, at home, uh, the Swedish side in the Europa League qualifying round first leg, uh, which means that our second leg away in Sweden, if we don't concede more than three goals, we're going through so pretty much we're going through uh, and we've got transfer deadline day to come as well today and the second game will be against Spal away in the Serie A now I'm not sure whether we're also going to play these two games or not I think I might simulate them we've got Norway and Poland uh, are these both at home or is the Poland game I think that's away isn't it yeah Norway at home Poland away in our final two qualifiers but um, we've already guaranteed a place at Euro 2020 as the top two from the group qualify and we've already guaranteed a top two finish at the moment it's just down to who's going to finish top us or Germany so I think I might just uh, simulate those games but we will play the first one uh, that is Nor Coping uh, in the second leg of our Europa League qualifier. Let's get to the group stage and let's find out who will be taking on in the group. Oh, yeah, and one thing as well as we stop the simulation here. Um, as well, we got some... Uh, oh, another bit for Satola. Another bit for Satola. This is really interesting now. Satola, clubs must realise this guy's no longer first choice. EA Gwincamp wanted to take him for 4.8 million, but like we said to Monaco... Unless we get a lot of money, we're not interested. So I'd rather keep him as a backup left back and not sell the guy. But we did get a bit of money um, uh, for our season ticket sales as well. Off camera as I was advancing to this game, uh, we got the season ticket sales coming in. Uh, not all the money goes in our budget. We've got 7.71 mil and our budget now is 5.7 mil. So a little bit of money left over and thus we might make one or two more signings today. Don't don't guarantee it. Don't don't think it's definitely going to happen because I'm not really sure. But uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. A little bit of money in the budget though, that's always good. Oh, and another bid as well. Uh, Andrea Ingegnere wanted by Sasena for £400,000 and wants to go and accept this bid. He's already turned down a move to Foggia. Um, so hopefully he'll accept this deal and finally lead the club. He's just he's, he's at the moment the only player on the transfer list. The one player we're trying to shift on. Just lead the club, Andrew. You're not going to play for us again. You know that. So first game, and it is indeed the second leg of our Europa League qualifier. Uh, heading into the game, switching formation, like I did discuss briefly in the last episode. Going to a 4-1-2-1-2 wide, just to get the Gallo triplets involved. And it's a chance for the fringe players to impress tonight, because I'm fielding a completely weak inside. After leading 4-0 from the first leg, I'm feeling very confident. So Marion, the 17-year-old academy graduate, is the captain's armband today. Vicari and Batante are going to make their debuts as well. First game, it is nor coping. Let's get the win. Let's get to the group stage. No need to field any of our strongest first 11 players out there. We've got Spau on the weekend. And after leading 4-0 in the first leg, it will take a collapse of epic proportions to throw away a ticket into the group stages. So let's just get the job done. We'll first get through. And, uh, and we'll be happy enough as Gallo finds Gallo. And now Gallo to Capone. Through to Gallo. Oh, what a lovely ball by Capone. It's Fabio Gallo bearing down on goal. Good save by the goalkeeper, though. And eventually, oh, Dan Monte left it. Eventually, it'll be cleared. Yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling worried at all. We're, we're going to get through tonight. It's, it's just a formality, really. I know that a lot of YouTubers simulate these sort of games, but I, I like to play them. I find them really fun to play. It's a great way to show how good your squad depth is and uh, and use the fringe and reserve players you normally wouldn't play and you normally wouldn't see in uh, a regular episode. So this is th these games are really fun for me. Believe that as Gallo gets on the ball. And Gallo, who normally really impresses in the games he plays, tries to spot one of his triplets. And he's away here. It's Alessandro Gallo to Alessandro Gallo. And it is 1-0 courtesy of Alessandro Gallo. And it's the one that we have the highest hopes for as well. Our number 17, our left-footed player on the right side. Nor coping nil. Palermo won. Away goal already. It's, it's over. We know now. We're going through. Tante, through the gap to Fabio Gallo, out wide to Romano, just off the bench for his first appearance now. Ali on the ball, feeds him down the right-hand side, Academy graduates linking up, love when that happens. And across to the centre, and it's flicked down, and Satola! Hello, son, rifles it in to the roof of the net on the volley, and it's 2-0, it's now 6-0 on aggregate. Palermo in full control, and Satola, well, that's why he said to Monaco and EA Guincamp, hands off. He stays our backup left back. He's now playing left mid today. Charges up the pitch. It was flicked on by Gallo. And he just smashes it on the six-yard area. Right into the roof of the net. So much shot power. I'm surprised the goal wasn't shaken. 2-0. I'm jumping for joy. We know we're into the group stages. But that's why Satola stays here. The Swedish side looking for a consolation goal here just before the end of the game and goes across from the corner and they've got it as well. No clean sheet for Rinaldi and the boys in the back line. It's 2-1. We know the game's over, but I'm annoyed I couldn't keep up with the clean sheet. This always frustrates me. I've said this quite a lot recently and uh, funny enough, in fact, 
a couple episodes ago, my Huddersfield CM, I said this too. Whenever I can see the late goal, whether we win or not, I'm really annoyed. So it just shows a lack of discipline, a lack of commitment and focus. And uh, it just, it really angers me. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. We've got the win. And uh, we are through to group stages, as we knew we were pre-game, really. Tiny bit more of the ball, uh, more shots, more on target. Not really much else to say other than that. And uh, for Man of the Match, it will go to Alessandro Gallo for getting our first goal. And he also got the unofficial assist, if you will, for our second goal through Satola, knocking on a cross with his head as uh, our left back fired at home. So 2-1, that's it. We are in to the group stages and uh, let's find out who we'll be taking on in our first ever European campaign. There's the confirmation. Match is rescheduled. Let's find out who it's going to be. Uh, today's the last day for the European qualifiers. Oh, but is Bellotti back yet? Yeah, he is back. Good stuff. Uh, oh, am I going to take Keane out? I don't want to take Keane out. Let's take Zaza out of the squad for Bellotti. And uh, I think... Or oh, maybe Jorginho out for Benassi because Benassi's younger, isn't he? Yeah, three years younger... Um, I'm not against doing that, actually. Benassi getting put in ahead of Jorginho. Okay, let's make a couple more changes to our Italy squad then for the uh, for the final two qualifiers. I did briefly touch on it last episode. I was contemplating taking out Zappa Costa for, uh, for Calabria. But uh, for the time being, I think I'll leave David in there. But uh, let's, let's take a look at our European qualifying group then. Uh, sorry, our... Um our Europa League group. That's the top scorers in Serie A. Well done. Let's take a look at the uh, the Euro League qualifiers. At, done it again. The the the, Euro, the Europa League group we've been joining, and uh, let's find out who we're going to be taking on. Dun dun dun. Any big teams to face? Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's find out. Shakhtar Donetsk, uh, who beat Manchester City on uh, Wednesday night in the Champions League in real life. RB Salzburg and FC Luzern uh, as well. So I think that's a, a Ukrainian side, definitely uh, an Austrian side, and I think FC Luzern are a Swiss side as well. So okay, that's a that's a decent group. Shakhtar will be tough. RB Salzburg will be quite tough, but I think we can get through that. I think we can definitely get through that group, no doubt. Yeah, just looking up, they are indeed a Swiss side. So, um, good stuff. We can definitely get through the group. So, transfer deadline day is here then. Uh, deadline day is here. 10 hours to work our magic. And uh, I don't anticipate us doing much with the money we've currently got. Um, you see confirmation there. Bereka Keen and Barela are off on international duty. But there is a little bit of money left in our budget right now. Now, we could play the pre-contract game. However... There's not really many players from Italy that have their contract coming in the, the year that would improve our team. So if we are going to splash our cash, we either do it now or in January or save it for the new season. And I, I'm someone who rarely ever saves money in career mode. If I've got it, I'm going to spend it. So as I take a look at the short, there's a few players here that we could sign with the money we've got, but very little options, really. I would probably say the best person we could sign for, for now is uh, we can't afford Patagna, but possibly, where is it, Lazari right there. But we'd have to get Spal to accept an undervaluation bill, which is, you know, quite unlikely, really. Um, but I'll put a bit in for him first and see what they want. It's definitely possible, but we're going to need Spal to say, yeah, they're okay with around £5 million. Um, we could potentially offer them a player swap, but I doubt they would want any of our players. We'll offer them Ingegneri <laughs> once again and, uh, and see what they say, but I highly doubt they'll say yes to this deal. And they're uh, looking for a right winger. Do we have a right winger here that they can have? Uh, no, we're not letting the Gallo twins go. Um, okay, so we'll offer them £5 million, and if they say no, it's... It's, it's basically over. Are they going to accept the deal? No, they want 8.2 mil plus a 5 cent sell on clause. So, yeah, we're just going to walk out. That, that negotiation, there was a chance it could have happened had he accepted undervaluation, but we just, we don't have the money for Lazari, really. We'll have to go after someone else. Now, I do quite like the look of Del Sol. Uh, he is a Pescara right winger. He's been thrown around in the comment section quite a few times. He's got some really good technical stats, which make up for his lack of real pace. Uh, as a 21-year-old winger, three-star weak foot, three-star skills. And uh, right now, it seems like the chief exec is saying that we could possibly get him for under his valuation, which is £4 million. His wages are really cheap as well, so we love that. So let's put a bid in and see what Pescara want for Del Sol. Now, we should definitely be able to afford this guy. We will offer him Ngignari. He's going to get offered to every single club we put in a bid for now. But I highly doubt they'll want him. And uh, no, they want a left winger, so okay, never mind. Uh, what we'll do is we'll put in a straight bid of, uh, let's go £3 million, because the chief exec said 2.6 six mil could perhaps work out we'll go to three million pounds it's just under uh, its valuation by a million and i'll wait and see what Pescara say okay all right they want 3.45 mil but a 10 percent sell-on clause and uh, i'm not too keen on the sell-on clause being involved because he might possibly cash in on him for the profit as you've got some decent young wingers here anyway so we'll remove that and we'll propose a new transfer and say, okay, fair enough. How about 3.6 mil, no sell on clause? And we'll see what they say to that. Oh, I bottled it. Should have just said the sell on clause was fine. I'm probably not going to sell him. Okay, uh, we'll propose a new transfer. Okay, all uh, right, right. 
I'm such an idiot. Uh, we'll go back to 3.4 mil and add a sell-on clause, which is a bit lower at 10%. Actually, we'll go 3.5 mil plus a 10% sell-on clause. I'm such a moron. I should have just accepted that deal. Okay, yeah, they're totally fine with that. 3.5 mil plus 10% selling clause. In the end, it's okay then. I thought I totally choked, but that's that's still a good deal. I'll take that. All right, so Ferdinando has accepted a rotation score status and four-year contract. No release clause in the contract. And now as we talk money, let's find out what he wants. I'm going to offer him what he's on right now, which is 3.2k. No sign or bonus to begin with. And see what they say to that. 3.9k and uh, two mini bonuses too. We'll take out that 10, uh, 10 appearance bonus and we'll see what he says to that deal. And they are totally fine with that. 3.9k a week, a tiny bit on the sign-on bonus as well. But Del Sol becomes our first signing today on deadline day. And that's a smart little pickup there for under the valuation. We still have a little bit of money left in our budget right now as well. Two million pounds plus 28 grand a week on the wages. So could probably bring in one more signing if we really wanted to. Uh, but let's take a look at Del Sol in our team real briefly then and see what we bought. A 71 rated right winger. Uh, that's his only listed position. Three star, three star, medium, medium work rate. He, he really does look bang average, to be fair. Physically, he's a bit of a letdown. You know, we like our wingers to be quick, but he's not that quick. 53 stamina only as well, but technically is where he really excels. 80 ball control, 76 curve, 78 dribbling, 70 finishing, not bad either. 77 long shot, 73 short pass as well, and 68 shot power on a 71 rated player. Those technical stats are actually really decent, so I'm pretty happy with that, despite the fact physically he's a bit of a letdown. He could be a smart little inside forward with some good technical stats there so Del Sol is in and uh, I'm I'm totally happy with that signing there now as for new signings it's pretty slim pickings now it's probably only two realistic players we could sign uh, Marco Melli of Fiorentina 67 rated 19 year old right winger or Vittorio Paragini, who I'd much prefer, but he's valued at more money, 3.1 mil, and he's on 16 and a half grand a week. Oh, it's less than Melly, just for noticing there. But his list of positions, he's, uh, he seems much more versatile. Uh, physically, he seems really decent as well. He's quick, he's got good balance as well. He's got good agility too. And technically, some great stats there. 81 dribbling, 76 finishing, 75 ball control as well. I really like the look at this guy, but I don't think we'll be able to afford him. We'll put a bid in and see if Benevento will let him, let him go on a cheat, but I, I highly doubt this deal is going to come off. Realistically, unless they accept two million pounds, he's probably not going to come in. We have Ingegneri, who could possibly leave for around 400 grand, but that's still not going to be enough because that's still going to be under the valuation by at least half a mil. So unless they accept this, it's not going to happen. And uh, Benevento say, forget it. We're not interested. We'd rather keep him here. And, uh, and thus, there's no chance of signing Paragini. Bit of a shame. Bit of a shame. We could still get Marco Melli, valued at 1.3 mil. And whilst he's not quite as good by any stretch of the imagination, technically, he is very good. 81 ball control, 75 dribbling, 80 finishing, which is quite good. 72 shot power as well. And physically, he's a real letdown. But technically, he does look pretty decent. And don't forget, in this team, we are a very technical side as well. So that could come in handy. Um, I'm going to advance one hour on deadline day. See if Ingegnari leaves the club. And then we'll put in a bit for Melli. Otherwise, we'll just put a bit in and, uh, and try and sign him straight away. And Ingegnari's transfer talks have broken down. What a surprise. So Ingegnari's going to be staying here. And that's why I didn't even bother waiting for the Paragini deal. Because I knew that was going to happen. He was never going to leave. And uh, Melagorni is wanted on a one-year loan deal from Sassuolo. But of course, going to say no, as that is a silly little offer. So, uh, yeah, let's put a bit in for Melly then. Again, we've got, we've got a little bit of money left, though. We should have enough to sign the guy. Um, but if they want a bit more in his valuation... Possibly that could be every penny squeezed out of us. Yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Do they want Ingegnari? Are they going to want him? I highly doubt it, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. No, they're not interested. What a shock. Ingegnari is going to be here forever. He's going to be like the Wayne Routledge of this save. Um, for those that, that don't know, Wayne Routledge was a player I had in my Swansea FM said so he just never left the club. But I'll uh, we'll put it straight back. Actually, no, it's going to go with an undervaluation bit because I think the chief exec said we possibly do that. So we'll put in a bit of £1 million to begin with. Uh, 300 grand undervaluation and see what they say to that deal. Okay, no, but they want a 1% sell-on clause. Barely seems worth it, really, unless we sell him for an awful lot of money, which is highly unlikely. But, okay, you want a 1% sell-on clause? Oh, that's too much. I'm walking out. No, I'm joking. That's fine. £1 million plus a 1% sell-on clause. That deal is, is totally fine with me. And a, a smart little sign in there. 1% sell-on clause? May as well not even bothered. I think they just wanted to use the sell-on clause feature this year. They thought sell-on clauses are finally available for us. Let's use them in every single deal. Uh, so Melly's okay with a rotation squad status and a four-year deal as well. No release clause in the contract. But as for money, he wants 21 grand a week, which is three and a half more than he's currently on right now. Told you maths was getting better. Um, but the bonuses are really big as well. A 300 grand sign-on bonus and 350 grand after 15 games. You're 67 rated, mate. Come on. 
Um, well, I don't really want to deal with a full fruit. That's a really cheap deal with that, just one million pounds plus a one percent sell-on clause. So we'll remove that bonus, and we'll just see if they're okay with that contract. Twenty-one grand a week and three hundred grand sign-on bonus, and an extra two grand a week. Mark, I'm not sure you deserve it, mate. I'm not sure you're worth it, really. That's a ridiculous amount of money. We do have the money to pay you that. And I do want to make another signing on deadline day. Our squad's not the thickest. We do need bodies. Okay, fair enough. You want the cash, I'll give you the money. Marco Melli's going to come in. 23 grand a week, expensive. And you better be proved to worth the money, son. You don't look that good. You don't excite me that much. You better prove to be worth every single penny, though. That's a lot of money for Marco Melli. That, that's an awful lot of money, really. Uh, series and our squad alongside Del Sol. It does mean our score gets a little bit thick, which is really important due to the Europa League games this season. We'll have a lot more games to play in our calendar. And to be fair to the guy, like, technically he's really good. I guess that's why he's got his money. 82 on ball control, 80 finishing, 75 dribbling. Very nice stats there on someone that could be either an inside forward or a nice cut inside and cross player. Um, but he looks pretty decent, as does Del Sol. And we didn't have any natural wingers here other than Gallo and Capone on the bench too. So I'm, I'm okay with those two signings right there. Yes, a little bit pricey in a transfer fee for the former and then the wages in the latter. But I'm okay with those two signings. But that will probably do it for deadline day though. Basically no money left over now. And unless we sign like a real fringe player, I don't really see the point. So I think we'll leave the money. We'll leave it for deadline day. I'm happy with those two signings. That's, that's decent deals for me. Oh, six hours to go. There is a bit here. Lofaso wanted on loan from Club Bruges. Of course, we're going to say no to that deal. Um, he's going to be staying right here as our first choice centre attacking midfielder slash centre forward. And, uh, oh, Alexis Sanchez just joined Real Madrid for £85.8 .8 million. Pounds. That's a really big expensive transfer. And another bid here for Ingegneri. Hobro IK wanted for 470 grand. There's not much time on deadline day, lads. If you are going to convince him, you'll need to do it right now. Is he going to go? No, Ingegneri's transfer talks have broken down. He's like the Regan booty of this save. Ingegneri is staying here. Fair enough, fair enough. We want a fixed squad, so maybe he'll come in handy one day. Probably not, we never know. But so that'll do it for transfer deadline day. Then deadline day is indeed over. I'm happy with what we did in this window as well. Didn't bring in a great deal of players and sort of went against the philosophy we discussed uh, at the first episode of the season. I said that it should be about quantity and not quality. What a clear out for Inter. Didn't spend any any money whatsoever for a 73.2 mil. I said that this year it should be about quantity instead of quality. Well, instead, we uh, we only signed four play uh, three players in the end. And, uh, and and spent 20.5 mil on, on the three of them and, uh, and didn't bring in that many bodies for the money we spent. But to be fair, I'm happy with the score we got. It is quite small, but I like the players we have. And uh, I do believe with the Europa League group we got as well, this could still be a really good season for us. So the top deals in the window were Alexis Sanchez to Real Madrid for 85.8 million pounds. James Rodriguez from Real Madrid to Manchester City for 83.8 million pounds. And also William Jose joining, Re uh, joining Spurs from Real Sociedad for 55.5 million pounds. So that is it. Transfer deadline day is over. We are done until January and I'm I'm happy enough with that window. Not too many bodies but some decent players. And there is your confirmation. Deadline day over. A loan offer for Mariani as well which of course we are going to reject as this guy's going to get a lot of minutes this season. I like him a lot. And an academy update as well. Two players in the youth squad right now. Uh, Matteo Esposito not looking that great and uh, Ricardo Gallo uh, not looking quite as good as his older brothers. So second and final game is indeed Spal away from home. We beat them in the first competitive game of the series in the Copa Nationale way back in season one. But last year here lost in the league by two goals to one. This year though we started off with a win. They've started off with a loss. So hopefully the same pattern will continue and we'll get a win in season three. Back to our normal lead lineup for the game. 4-1-2-1-2 narrow as the boys are fit and fresh after being rested in midweek. Second game Spal. Let's get the three points. I didn't know we would win the game in midweek, but I knew we wouldn't lose. I knew we were going to qualify, so I didn't need to play any of these boys in midweek. And rotating your side in Karimo is one of the most important things to do. You need to make sure your boys are fit and fresh going into every game, because having tired legs out there affects performances. As uh, Bereka steps inside there, our new left, uh, left back. A uh, lovely ball through to Metagorni as well, who slides in and puts it in off the post as we go a goal up. And have the lead just nine minutes in. Melagorni running to the away fans makes it 1-0. And a great little assist there by Bareka cut inside. And a brilliantly timed through ball. Perfect weighted as well. And for Melagorni, slid in, just beat the goalkeeper to the ball. And it just snick in after clipping the inside of that post. 1-0 to Palermo. Perfect start. I know it does sound really obvious, but you've got so much better chance of winning games with a team of fit and fresh and raring to go as opposed to playing players on like 75, 80% stamina. 
I, I know that it sounds like an obvious thing to do, but a lot of players don't rest their players. They just play the same squad over and over and over again. That's not good. In a long season, that is going to take its toll. If Coutrone steps inside and the chance to go two goals up early. Coutrone, oh! Just wide the post. Calabria, out wide to Barriella. It's a nice little step over by our captain. He's round another as well. Nicolo. Oh, I love this guy. I love this guy. Nicolo. Oh, he's just too good. Barella. Oh, good save with a goalkeeper to prevent the wonderful solo goal. I love Nicolo Barella, man. You made him captain. I'm so glad you did. He's, he's amazing. We don't deserve him here. Just waiting for the final to come any second now. And there it is. Final score away against Spau. 1 0 to the lads from Sicily. Another three points in the bag. Back to back wins to start the season off. Excellent beginning for us. Yeah, please with that win. Solid 1 0. I mean, we probably should have scored more goals, if I'm being totally honest here. 14 shots, 6 on target, and 54% possession compared to 1 and 0 from our host today. But even though we didn't score as many as we should have done, I'll still take the three points. And a man of match, I'm going to go to Bereka actually, in, uh, in the left back role. He got the assist for Melagorni's goal, and uh, I thought he played quite well. So Bereka man of the match, and he's been a pretty smart signing to the club as well. 16 million plus that 20% sell on clause too. And just before the two Euro qualifiers, which we are, of course, going to simulate, uh, the Italian FA have come to us and reviewed my position. And unsurprisingly, they've said I'm fine to carry on. So good news. I stay on as Italy manager, as we, of course, knew we would. Otherwise, the series will be over. And also in a, ca a, squad, a scouting update as well uh, from a Portuguese scout based in Italy, of course. Uh, any players good enough for the academy after the first month? Oh, he looks like he could be quite good. Only under 20 grand valuation, though. We'll reject him. Uh, we'll reject him definitely. Uh, he'll get rejected too, and as will he. So actually, no one good enough for the first patch. Bit of a shame. And I think I'm just realising as well, that means that our squad is going to be reset, isn't it? Oh, for goodness sake. So our squad has been reset as well, and I've not got the boys Keen, Barela, and uh, Bareka here as well, because the international job offer came whilst we were on the international breaks. So the squad gets reset. That is really annoying. It's still another bug, which I wish EA would fix. It's, it's a little thing, but it really grinds my gears. Because again, this has been a bug since the international management became a feature in FIFA Career Mode. How have they not fixed these sort of things yet? I was contemplating simulating the first game and then playing the second if there was still a chance for us to qualify as group winners. Um, but I'm not going to bother now because it's not my squad. It's it's the AI squad. That is really annoying. So we say we'll just simulate them. We'll just, we'll just advance straight through the calendar and, uh, and get past the international break and get to the Roma game, and uh, in the next episode you see games against Roma, FC Luzern, uh, the Swiss side in the Europa League group, our first ever Europa League group game, uh, Milan and Sampdoria as well. But that is just really annoying. It's just one of those things that's a small bug, but it really annoys me because it's never been fixed, and it's been part of the game for years. You know, and if someone's played the game for, for well, since FIFA 99, it's just so annoying. But uh, we won. Did we win both of them? Yeah, we did indeed. Uh, so we'll find out our position in the group then. We knew we qualified anyway, so uh, it, it wasn't really that big of a deal if we played them or not. We'll find out if we topped the group or finish in second. No, Germany won them both. So in the end, probably a good thing we did simulate them as the games in the end counted for pretty much nothing. So that will end today's episode of Club and Country, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like as likes are of course very much appreciated and you really help the channel out as well. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. Have a great week as well and enjoy your weekend and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon. Bye.